Someone manipulated Bitcoin price, posting fake news about the SEC approving the ETF exactly when the SEC is hesitating to approve the ETF out of concerns that Bitcoin price can be manipulated. Did some random schmuck just prove the SEC right? Destroying all chances of an ETF getting approved. And what does this mean for Bitcoin and crypto to get recognized as a first class asset going after gold as a better gold? for the digital era of the world. I'll try to answer that in this video and how I see it impacts Bitcoin price from here. So yesterday in the DCA agenda, I had the first point ETF finally question mark, ETF coming question question mark. This was at 3.18 PM Swedish time. Then at 3.21 Cointelegraph posts breaking SEC approves iShares Bitcoin spot ETF. I was at the computer at the time and I noticed that this guy, Eric Balshunas, who is the senior ETF analyst at Bloomberg and the guy that everyone was quoting for ETF approval percentage, he asks source exclamation mark question mark at 327. And he also wrote while I expect to wake up one day in the next couple of months to a headline just like this. This seems a bit ahead of schedule. Trying to confirm source now. Stay tuned. And then at 3.41 Eleanor Terrett, another journalist, posted BlackRock has just confirmed to me that this is false. Their application is still under review. So if we now go back to the chart and remember this timeline. It's absolutely fascinating. So at 3.21, which is here, Cointelegraph posts. Then nothing happened for a few minutes. In fact, first it dumped. The timings shown here are UTC, but this is 3.21 Swedish time. But then 23 minutes passed. And then Eric's source tweet was here. 27 minutes passed. But the vast majority of market participants, they don't question the post and buys more and faster and more and faster faster and price goes all the way up and hits $30,000 exactly. I saw that this was not confirmed. I did not buy here. Instead, I was looking for confirmation, confirmation which I couldn't find. And Eleanor's false tweet came here at 41 minutes past. And finally, the entire pump retraced exactly. And from this point, 24 minutes past to this point, 49 minutes passed, that is 25 minutes only. And then it happened. The day we all thought would never come. The SEC was actually funny. US Securities and Exchange Commission. Careful what you read on the internet. The best source of information about the SEC is the SEC. Sec intern, one point. Coin Telegraph intern, zero points. What was less funny, honestly, was this. Cointelegraph editor-in-chief. And this is not a problem of, uh, of journalism per se. It's a problem of the society that, and of the technology. I'm talking about indexation on Google. I'm talking about social media, where if you're not the first, you're the last. So it's not our fault. It's society. Well, I resisted the urge to retweet this before checking if it's actually true. Maybe something you could try for your publication in the future. Okay, so yesterday's news was fake. But if we now go back to what I actually wanted to talk about yesterday, before all this got derailed, was the bigger picture, the outlook from here. So let's first listen to this excellent interview with Kathy Wood, the CEO of ARK Invest, by also excellent journalist Natalie Brunel. If you look at what happened during the regional bank crisis this year, we learned a very important lesson. We had regional banks stocks plummeting, some of them going bankrupt, and Bitcoin rose from 19,000 to 30,000. What did that tell us? It tells us that because of the decentralization and the transparency in the network, that counterparty risk is not an issue for Bitcoin. And so there was a flight to safety into Bitcoin. Think about that as 
bank stocks were plummeting. That spoke very loudly to me. Mm, true and all, but if we overlay Bitcoin price with the orange line, which is the S&P 500, we see that stocks also recovered during this period, arguably in relative terms compared to itself, even more than Bitcoin. And I think the other reason uh, people have been reticent is they heard about FTX. And if they think about FTX, though, FTX proved the point uh, that you really want to be involved with a Bitcoin network and not something like an FTX. Why? Bitcoin is transparent and decentralized. FTX was completely centralized, completely opaque and a fraud. Yes, this is exactly what I said in last week's video. So now with the ETF, you know, we know the research people at the SEC and they know what they're talking about. They are really good. We've met the head of FinHub now who reports directly to Chairman Gensler. And for me, the disconnect is they know so much and they are so good that I believe this was much more Gary Gensler standing in the way. I think Gary Gensler's personal Vietnam is coming uh, is coming around to haunt him. I have never heard anyone speaking so explicitly about what they have observed and what they think is going on within the SEC. That means some of the research uh, that we believe is percolating up to those commissioners might be getting through to them and might be the grounds now for the approval of a Bitcoin ETF. And we don't think that, that the SEC will approve just one. They will probably approve a group of them. And that means it will become a marketing battle. Yes, it will become a marketing battle. So take note here, guys, these big funds will begin marketing their product to their clients, which are big money like pension funds and family offices and so on. Now let's listen to Larry Fink, the chairman and CEO of BlackRock. And BlackRock has over 9 trillion in AUM, which stands for Assets Under Management, and 9 trillion dollars is a lot of money. For comparison, Sweden has a GDP of 700 billion. The entire country. This rally is way beyond the rumor. I think the, the rally today is about a flight to quality with all the issues around the Israeli war now, global terrorism. And I think there's more people running into a fight, the quality, whether that is in treasuries, gold or crypto, depending on how you think about it. And I believe crypto will play that type of role as a flight to quality. Wow. I believe crypto will play that type of role as a flight to quality. And before anyone gets angry here, he is not disrespecting Bitcoin by saying crypto. He just can't say the word. Well, I can't talk about Bitcoin because we have a filing with the SEC, so I'm prohibited. I can talk about crypto in general. Okay, so what are my thoughts based on all this? Well, my default assumption is definitely that the biggest players are out to manipulate us. They need to think about their business. They won't say anything wrong, but still, they are not only going to say stuff out of the goodness of their hearts alone. But at this point, I'm quite happy for them to manipulate crypto hostile politicians in the US and even more hostile agencies. Because it's difficult to understand the strategies of some of these agencies, if the true objective is actually to protect us investors. Approving futures ETFs with counterparty risk, but refusing spot ETF with far less counterparty risk. How is that better for investors? It makes no sense. And they did nothing with all the opaque centralized exchanges where they were actually needed because it was impossible to see what was going on for us customers sitting looking in from the outside. Subpoenas and stuff was actually needed, while instead they went after a bunch of open source projects where the code was on GitHub and all the transactions were public on the blockchain, fully transparent for investors and arguably building useful things for the world. How is that helpful? I don't get it at least. It feels like there's instead been an 
element of protecting legacy interests that the old traditional finance have lobbied to try to squish this new threat of new better technology coming after their business. So with that perspective, I'm super happy to hear these statements. I believe that these statements yesterday just placed a powerful defense in front of the crypto industry castle. Great. So maybe that random dude did everyone a favor after all. Or Larry Fink hadn't come on that interview yesterday. In the last cycle, it was really when companies and leaders like Elon Musk came out strongly in support for Bitcoin and crypto that a lot of the haters actually backed off. Then came the bear market, the attacks resumed, but now we have a new wave of people with enormous credibility in the traditional financial industry making these enormously powerful statements about Bitcoin and crypto being a flight to safety at a time when banks go under right and left because they speculated away customer deposits. FTX lost customer funds speculating on various VC investments and altcoins without stop losses. Silicon Valley Bank lost customer funds speculating on government bonds. How big difference is that really? Except that only one of them gets a government bailout. But as Cathy Wood pointed out, the technology blockchain, the technology of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies is the exact opposite of a centralized exchange like FTX, which is like a bank. Specifically, it's exactly fractional reserve banking, which is a system in which only a fraction of bank deposits are required to be available for withdrawals, which is legal when it's a bank doing it. Of course, in the FTX case, they did other illegal stuff too. But this is how they lost most of the money from what I can understand. While the few high profile hostile anti-crypto politicians in the US predominantly will intentionally try to blur the borders and say, haha, look at FTX, look how scammy Bitcoin is. While the truth is the exact opposite. And it's great hearing these powerful individuals say that too. Great. So long term. This makes me even more confident in this technology to go much further than we can even imagine today. Love it. Short term, yeah, they might talk price up when they want to dump. Who knows? So, if we go back to the chart and remind ourselves that despite the drama yesterday, we remain in the same range. We're just bouncing around. And if we zoom in a little, we can observe something else. This inverse head and shoulders that I highlighted in previous videos and I said target is 30k. Well, that one has now been reached. Pattern completed. But from here. I need to see a proper breakout from this range before I can begin any breakout dance here in the office. So where is the breakout point exactly? And the truth is that I don't really know for sure. I said already before we even hit 30k that this will probably be a resistance area. Not just one line. So it depends a little on how we get there. If it's here at 30,400 or even here at 31,500. If we can break out, retest, flip resistance into support and then move up again with a trend up with Larsen Line Gold. That's probably the signal. But I can still wish, hope and dream for one more dump before that happens. If we break below 25k, we confirm a head and shoulders top pattern in the chart, which then gets a target of about 20k. So 20k would be around here. That's where we turned last time. And if you look at the volume profiles, we could even move down here to 19.2. That's this node here, or even to this node at 16.8 for a double bottom of sorts. If that happens, two things would happen. Number one, that would help Larry's clients. If they can get in at lower levels once his ETF is actually approved, that would be great for him. He wants happy clients who make money, 
so they give him more money to manage. Then they need good entries, not buy when price is already pumped, right? The second thing that would happen is that I would buy more on those supports, here and here if we get there. But that's not a prediction, we might get a breakout, which would be great too. Now someone will say, but didn't you say you were mostly in cash? Yes, but I still have Bitcoin price exposure today, more than most. And notably Sweden actually has an ETP at least since 2015. If we break out here tomorrow, trust me, I'll make enough money, don't worry about that. I know already that many people will be confused about this, but you don't need to predict the direction of the market. I'll make money regardless which of these two scenarios happens. That's how to play a range as we are in now. My process isn't the indicator alone. That's why I made this course, so I don't need to explain this over and over. That's why I painstakingly send TA reports every single Friday. And anyone who says that they can predict the next move in the markets. Could they predict this event yesterday? Unless they were the guy actually doing it. No, they couldn't. So hundreds of millions of dollars were lost on both the short side and then on the long side in 25 minutes. So overall, I'm very happy for the events yesterday. I don't think it has destroyed the chances of a spot ETF getting approved. And all these companies will start marketing Bitcoin and crypto exposure to their clients, which over time can make huge impact on Bitcoin's credibility and on Bitcoin's price. And hopefully they start that from as low prices as possible. Don't fall for any scammers, all links are in the description, or just type ctolarsen.com manually. Thank you, Tak. CTO Larson out. Hey, though.